Hi, I'm Don Singletary, and welcome to the channel. We live in a great time. I read a sentence or two the other day that said I can, I have a piece of glass in my pocket. I can take it out and uh, rub my fingers across it, and I can talk to my mother, who's 3,000 miles away, like she's in the room. Now, that's magic, uh, the magic of technology, of course. And a lot of things have changed. And one of the things that's really a lot of fun now are day trading the micro e-minis. Uh, up until May of 2019, you had a trade it, it, uh, on a scale of like 20 or $50 a point, And it'd go up and down 10 or 15 points in two or three minutes. And you'd be up and down several hundred dollars right away. Well, there's a lot of people who can't afford to learn how to trade by watching their account balance, which may not be that big, run up and down hundreds of dollars in just two or three minutes at a time. So now that problem is solved. It's called a micro e-mini contracts. And there's other similar new products in the financial markets too that you can trade. But on this channel, we talk about trading small and trading the micro e-mini contracts. Now you're going to see a trade today, a live trade, that uh, before May of 2019, it would have had to trade at $50 a point. But it's one-tenth size now with the micro e-minis, and it's only going to be, the trade I'm going to show you today, is trading at $5 a point. Now, that's something that's affordable for most people with some discretionary income that they can trade in a higher risk category. This is not the type of trading that you spend the rent money, the grocery money, your retirement college funds. This is set aside some discretionary income like you were going to get on a plane to go to Vegas because this is risky trading. Not everybody can do it. And I have to tell you, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> If you're just starting out, try their free beginner's playlist. There are two of them, and the links are in the text below the video. Now, if you're new to the channel, you're just learning to trade futures, you came to the right place. Two things for you. First, I use a consistent setup. You don't see something different and 15 things going 20 different ways every time you uh, come over to the channel. The watch list, the trade quotes, the chart, and the indicator. That's it. The basic four. And uh, we're going to show you how easy it is to do that. Now, as I do for all the live trades that I feature during the week, I'm going to get right into what I call the trade setup. Here's how that works. Well, we've got the MACD in the bottom half of the frame here. And then the top is the S&P Micro E-Mini. 930 goes up and uh, kind of tops out around 1030 and then 11 o'clock. Starts a decline that goes all the way down until about, uh, well, just after noon to 1230. And then right at 1230, the market tries to go back up again. And it's almost the same price there that it is over at 930 when the market opened. So it's hard to say there's a predominant trend for the day. There's no doubt, though, that since 1030 this morning, and that's a two-hour time span until 1230, the market has definitely been losing momentum and going down. You can see that as indicated by the green arrow in the MACD in the bottom pane. Take a look in the bottom pane over on the right. That's the MACD momentum scale. And since 11 o'clock all the way down to 1230 and 1235 even, uh, it's gone from plus six down to like minus 3.8. And uh, so I'm going to short a contract thinking that the momentum might continue down. I'm going to go over now to the live trade screen at uh, my Tastyworks software here. And I'm going to uh, put in a, a bracket order. Now, the way I do this, I go up to the uh, watch list and I click on the bid price of the S&P 500 Micro E-Mini. And then I select bracket. And then I drag that over on the left because on the right, as you can see, I'm choosing the chart icon. And there you go. So I have a live chart on the right and my bracket order on the left, which has my entry order, my stop loss price, and my target or close it profit price on the left. Everything's all right there on one screen. Now, if you're new and not familiar with the bracket order yet, uh, look in the text below the video here. There's a bracket OCO. Click on that as a short video that will show you how to set this bracket order up. 
And I entered the uh, trade price, the stop loss, and the target price all at once. And I clicked the send button. And now I'm in the trade. I'm short one contract at 47.15 and a half. I have my stop up at 47.20. It's four and a half points up at $5 a point times four and a half. That would be $22.50. That's my worst case scenario. My target is down at 4700 It's just a little bit off scale, but I marked it there anyway. And just for the record there, those green circles, I went up to 47.16 and a quarter. So that's like a three quarters of a point, which would be $3.75. That's my maximum drawdown so far. In other words, the worst position I've been in since I placed the trade. Now, my stop's $22.50 up, but I've only actually been down uh, just a little less than four bucks in the trade. So that's like no drawdown at all so far. And uh, I'm trading with a great profit of maybe $3.75 already. Now, I do want to talk to you about the size of this trade, about the amount of money we're going to make on the trade, and about the amount of money we're going to risk on the trade. Remember all the talk I did at the beginning of this video about giving you an affordable way to learn how to day trade these micro e-minis. Well, that's what we're doing. Our first goal, rule number one, is to preserve the capital in our account. It's a rookie mistake to go into a trade and where the first priority is making money because that will lead you to take unnecessary risk and professional traders put avoidance of risk as the first priority, not how much money they're trying to make. Another thing too I get asked a lot is, well, how do you know where to put your target? Uh, I don't, and nobody else does either. I mean, it's just a wish list, the target. It's a placeholder. The market doesn't even know it's there and doesn't care. I can promise you one thing. If you trade small like this and you learn how to handle the risk on a trade, learn how to use your software, learn how to do the math in your head, how to think fast and how to make decisions before you have all the facts, all that stuff takes practice. You can't just start cold turkey and master those skills. And that's what it takes if you're going to be able to consistently make money. This is a risky kind of trading, but it's also a lot of fun. My mentor used to say to me, Don, do you know what you call a horse race without a $2 bet? And I said, what, Phil? And he said, boring. <laughs> and uh, I do love this kind of trading. Now we're trading at uh, 47.14.75. I just skipped ahead about one minute on the trade. We're four minutes in now, and uh, I'm moving my stop down. I moved it from uh, 20 to 47.19, and now I moved it to 14.17.50. That means my maximum risk on this trade right now is only $10. And look, I'm trading down at 47.12. Now, at 47.12, that's three and a half points up. So that's uh, $17.50 I'm ahead on the trade right now in four minutes. Now do the math. Okay, if every four minutes for an hour I made seventeen fifty, that means I do it fifteen times. So that's a an hour to rate of two hundred sixty two dollars and fifty cents an hour. And we're only four minutes into the trade. Now I know that's a crazy way to look at things, but I just want to get a I only do that to bring some perspective to this thing. I'm uh, practically sitting in my pajamas, clicking a mouse and I made seventeen and a half dollars in four minutes. And if I'm just learning, I'd say, whoa, that's in the beginning. Wait till I go to the bigger contracts or trade more. I mean, it's worth taking your time to learn this stuff because it's so incredibly fun and you can make money at it. Uh, most people don't. They get discouraged before they have the discipline to be able to learn it. And frankly, it, this type of trading just, it isn't for everybody, okay? You have to have the right risk tolerance. You have to have some money that you could burn if you had to. And uh, this is not for uh, retirement college accounts or conservative things like that. There's, you can have a lot of fun with this type of trading. I often compare this type of trading to going to the casino. Well, I'll tell you what, I've been to casino a lot. My son used to deal at the World Series of Poker in Vegas, and we go out there. And I guarantee you, I keep more of my money doing this type of trading than I did standing there in the casino 
uh, and putting it all back on the table. I can get a little bit at a time with these and I really, really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Now you see what happened there. My stop is now below my entry point. I shorted 47.15 and a half, so I locked in a half a point, a whopping two and a half dollars I've locked in. And I'm trading uh, at uh, 47.13.50 right now, barely up 10 bucks in the trade. It's only been six or seven minutes, but uh, when you're in a trade like this and your brain's going 90 miles an hour, trying to anticipate what might go wrong or right next, uh, it keeps you pretty busy and and uh, but time sometimes slows down in a trade like this. It isn't making a lot of progress. It's not a real exciting trade, uh, but still it's fun because you click a mouse and you get money out of thin air. Something I like about that. Trading 47.11 right now. 47.11, that's four and a half points times five. That's $22.50, uh, about $20, $20 now at 47.11.50 and uh, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to eke out of this trade but uh, it looks like it's getting tired of going down it may go back on back on me the other way I've only got seven and a half dollars a point and a half locked in right now get out my Tastyworks mouse and uh, see if I could capture some more of those uh, profits there at 47.14, like I said, that's only seven and a half bucks. Now I'm trading 47.10.50 right there. That's a $25 uh, unrealized gain. Now it's uh, 27.50, and I get my mouse again. I'm going to move that stop down. Oh, I traded 47.09 there for just a second, and I'm going to move that stop down here and. Where do I move it? I'm, my eyes are going back and forth between the trading price, that 47.10.50 over there on the right, and uh, the the point of the, the mouse arrow there. 47.12.5 is where I've got it right now. And that would lock me in $15 on the trade. And I'm holding the button on the mouse because I'm thinking it over. Should I go down another, another uh, five bucks or something? And uh, you never, you have to make decisions, like I said, before you have all the facts. And I'm trading uh, perilously close to my stop now. Uh, I'm only 0.5 points from my stop. So, uh, not looking great here to make a lot of money on this trade, but I want to make use of my time here and get everything that I can, of course. In this type of trading, you have to get kind of a mindset that as long as you don't lose any money, you had a successful trade or lose more than you should have. And you'll know that, uh, I guarantee you. Now getting really close here. There I am. Stopped out 47, 12 and a half right now. So we didn't make a lot of money from the trade. But the takeaway is, you notice, I'm always obsessed and every professional trader should be obsessed with reducing risk on a trade. You learn to reduce the risk and worry about that. The money will take care of itself. Sometimes the market lets you have a great bit for a little bit of work, and uh, sometimes it doesn't. And uh, But the main thing is a successful trade will be any trade, even if you lose a little bit of money, if you didn't lose any more than you see you had to by taking risk that you volunteered for, in, uh, in a fit of greed, trying to make more money or something. Nothing wrong with trying, but as you gain experience, you begin to be able to measure the risk-reward. You can tell, uh, you get a feeling for when a trade might be tired, or you learn from this trade signal indicator in the MACD when it's telling you that this one is about to fizzle out, you need to take the money and move on. And you can learn those kinds of things. Those are the skills you need to learn. It's not a mathematical thing where you can say, I'm going to trade uh, three to one. Uh, I'm going to win 70% of my trades. You can do all that, that kind of math you want to. And you're just hoping. It's like Easter Bunny territory. And, uh, but uh, you have to be realistic about your expectations. And you're not going to be able to go in and, uh, and make these little chops of money until you gain some experience. And so that's why I always urge everyone on the channel to practice risk control. Don't worry about the money. 
And uh, small trades are great because you get the same experience you get with a larger trade, only you're just missing the terror of being down $300 in a minute and a half and wondering, uh-oh, what the hell do I do now? And that's why you want to trade small, at least in the beginning, and then you can scale, scale up. Everybody knows how to multiply. Just uh, learn the craft first and then worry about the money later you'll be a lot better off. That's the best advice I can give you. Please take a look at the uh, book link in the text below the video. I have a great uh, chapter on trading psychology in the book and all the stuff's organized uh, in, a, in, a, in a manner and, and sequence where it's easy to learn. Little building blocks and things like that. Hit the like button if you want to see another video like this one and uh, please subscribe and you'll be notified of the video coming next week. Thanks for being here today. I'm Don Singletary. I hope every day is a payday for you. Thank you.